Good morning and a very big welcome to church. It is so great to have you with us as we gather for worship today for Church Online. So if you're tuning in for the first time or you're pretty new to Ivy and you've just been checking us out, I want to say a massive welcome to you. We are so glad that you're with us and we would love nothing more than to get you connected with all that's going on and plugged in with everything happening at Ivy. Um, the best way to do that is simply head to our website ivychurch.org and there there is a link for you to click and you can get in touch and let us know that you're new and want to get involved. But wherever you're tuning in from, why not say hey on the chat, let us know you're tuning in and on board with us this morning. So today we have four in-person gatherings happening. We've got two at Didsbury, we've got two at Cheadle Hume and I tell you what, we have loved gathering together live and in person in these, these ways so far. And we're gonna continue to do that over July and August. And if you wanna be a part of it and be a part of these gatherings, then make sure you book your place at the beginning of the week. And you can do that again by heading, heading to the website ivychurch.org. So today we're going to be continuing in our blessed series, which so far has been so good. Really practical teaching and instruction for how we can seek to bless our world and reach people with the good news of the gospel in really simple ways. And you know what? One of the best ways that you can get the most out of this series, in fact, not just this series, but all the teaching that you hear at Ivy on a Sunday is by getting connected to a grow group. These are the places where we go a little bit deeper into what we've looked at on a Sunday and how it outworks itself in our everyday lives. Now, our grow groups, if you're new, are the small groups that meet throughout the week in all different places across the city, but at the moment, predominantly on Zoom. But they're great places of community and friendship and worship and encouragement, and they're real places of growth as we seek to be those who follow Jesus in our every day lives and if you want to get connected the best way to do that is to join a grow group and again as always if you want to find out how you can do that then head to our website now this morning we're going to be hearing from God's word we're going to be hearing some testimony there's going to be time for us to reflect but right now we want to worship together so let me pray before we do so heavenly father we just want to thank you for this time together and I just thank you that in your word it says where two or three are gathered together in your name, that you are here in the midst. And we might be scattered, we might be gathering from all sorts of different places, uh, Father, but we want to recognise that you are present. We welcome your presence afresh. And in this moment, we were going to have our focus, we want to give our heart's affection and our mind's attention on you, to put you in your rightful place as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Amen. Let's worship. Say 
can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Yours is the glory, yours is the 
And we found that uh, eating and inviting people around to eat is a great way of getting to know people, breaking down barriers, and it's a good gateway to talk about faith and to talk about Jesus. Uh, one thing we always used to do pre-COVID was to have an open table um, on Christmas Day, um, and we did used to uh, volunteer to have postgraduate students who had nowhere to go from the university uh, to join us, um, and many other people. Um, so, for example, we also uh, once had our Muslim neighbours round when we lived um, um, at a house in Didsbury, and it was a really great way of, um, you know, we could we could talk to them about Christmas. We could uh, they could have uh, fun with Christmas crackers for the first time, um, and it was a really great way to talk about yeah talk about faith. They talked about some of the stories they knew about, you know, when Jesus and his family were in Egypt, um, and it was a really good a really good way in. And um, the next day. Um, and we were really touched because they said that they'd, um, you know, they really, um, really enjoyed coming round, and they felt that you know we were like uh, family to them um, because we'd invited them round on such a special day. Um, and we always take the opportunity when we have um, people at the table uh, to say grace and thank God for the food and thank God for the people who are actually there with us. Um, and one great example was when my uncle came from America to stay with us. Um, and it was by praying regularly on a daily basis and, and um, at the table that we, we managed to invite him to church. And he said, yes, he'd come. And he gave his life to Jesus in Manchester. Um, what was interesting was that when he went back to America, um, he um, didn't quite tell the family he had given his life to Jesus, uh, but then started asking them if they would say grace together as a family. Um, and that gradually led to uh, him um, sort of, uh, you know, attending church and things over there. Um, and it was lovely because he died not long after and his family asked us what happened in Manchester. He returned a different person and he wanted us to pray together as a, a family at the, at the dinner table. Lou Malnati's, Portillo's and Sather's. If you've ever lived in Chicago, or even just visited Chicago, your mouth is probably watering. I lived in Chicago my whole life, and those are some of my family's very favorite restaurants. I'm sure you have your own list of favorite places to eat as well. And those are the places that everyone in your friend group or family gets excited about going out to eat. I think in general, Americans have a love affair with food. But despite that, we often fail to recognize the power of eating specifically the experience of eating with someone. There's something special that happens when we gather the table. And I think this brings us to the third of our blessed practices, and it's my favorite, 
E stands for eat. And we see great examples of the power of eating together in the life of Jesus throughout Scripture. We see him eat with people. But if I ask you to list all the ways that Jesus blessed the people around him during his time on earth, my guess is that eating wouldn't be on your list. You'd probably mention things like, well, he taught and he did miracles and he prayed and he walked on water and, you know, he died on the cross. And then eventually you talk about the resurrection and you should mention all those things. But did you ever notice that part of the way that Jesus blessed and saved the world was by, wait for it, eating. I know it sounds a little crazy, but actually go back and read the Gospels. Eating was central to Jesus' mission of loving others and showing them God's love. In fact, much of his ministry centered around meals. He performed his first miracle at a wedding feast. One of his most well-known miracles was feeding the 5,000 on a hill in a countryside. The night before his crucifixion, he brought together his closest friends for a meal. After his resurrection, he shared breakfast on the beach with his disciples. Its author and Bible scholar N.T. Wright, he says this, When Jesus himself wanted to explain to his disciples what his forthcoming death was all about, he didn't give them a theory. He gave them a meal. The blessed practice of eating doesn't have to only happen in your house or on your dime. In fact, it can happen when you get invited to someone else's party and they're paying for it. One of the things I admire about Jesus is sometimes, yes, he hosted dinner for others. Like how about the time he had 5,000 guests and he fed them all? I mean, that had to be a good time. But sometimes he also got invited to other people's parties, like the party at Levi's house or the wedding at Cana. And when the wine ran out, he made sure there was more and better wine. Now that'll get you invited to a lot of parties. Whether it was dinner at his place or a night in the town, he saw both of them as a missional opportunity. Wherever there was good food and people, it created an opportunity to deepen relationships and make friends. So don't just think you have to have people to your place. See if you become the kind of person where they actually invite you over to their place. I love what author Henry Nouwen wrote about the power of eating together. He said this, when we invite friends for a meal, we do much more than offer them food for their bodies. What we offer is friendship, fellowship, good conversation, intimacy, and closeness. So let me ask you this, what would it look like if you set aside just one or two meals out of 21 every week to bless people by eating with them? I mean, picture a world where people are sitting together, eating, talking, laughing, listening, connecting to one another. See, I think that's the picture of the world that God is waiting to see. It was in their book, Right Here, Right Now. My, my friends Alan Hirsch and Lance Ford, they write about what it looks like to live on mission every day. And they say that sharing meals together, and here's the quote, is one of the most sacred practices we can engage in as believers. In fact, they even go on to say that if every Christian would regularly invite a stranger or a poor person to their home for a meal just once a week, we could literally change the world by eating. What if they're right? I think they are. And I think Jesus understood this too. And if you knew only one thing was standing between a neighbor or a friend and eternal life, and it was eating a meal with them, would you do it? I know you would.
the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I dared not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night and through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my living could imagine so great a mercy where heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross is spoken I am forgiven, the King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living.
Guys, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's been so great to have you with us and I hope you found so much value in what was shared and again in the time for reflection. As I said at the start, if you're new to Ivy and you want to connect, then we would genuinely love to hear from you. Again, head to the website and you'll be able to do just that. But also, um, if you're a regular with Ivy and you want to know all that is going on in the coming weeks and months, and there is a lot coming up, then make sure you head to the website. That is the central place for all the information about all that's going on, the events, our grow groups, everything you can find there on our website. Again, don't forget, if you want to join us live and in person at Pop-Up Church, either here at Didsbury or over at Cheadle Hume, then make sure you sign up during the week and we would love to see you there. Guys, I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday and a great rest of the week and we hope to see you very soon. But we'll see you here, same time, same place next week. Have a great week. Real love